One Man's Family, brought to you every weekday night at this time, transcribed by Bactine, the remarkable new family antiseptic and germicide, another fine, dependable product of Miles Laboratories, makers of Alka-Seltzer. <laughs> Overheard between Jack and Clifford in the library of the family home. What's the matter, Cliff? Oh, nothing, but I've had Elwood Giddings held up to me as a good example until his name hits my face with a smack of a wet towel. Yeah, Dad kind of likes him. Likes him? He's got a crush on him. Worked his way through college, early rise, early to bed, all business, gonna get somewhere, self-made man. Today I lugged Elwood's trunk back to the hotel for him. That trunk weighed 140 pounds. Mm-hmm, so that's how it is with the barbers today. Friends, once you try Bactine, we know you'll agree it's the handiest bottle in the house. Yes, Bactine, spelled B-A-C-T-I-N-E, the new family antiseptic made by the makers of Alka-Seltzer, is winning new laurels every day. You'll use it when the children cut or scratch themselves, when Dad nicks himself shaving, when hot grease splatters you in the kitchen. Bactine relieves the pain, helps prevent infection. Bactine is a clear, colorless liquid that does not stain skin or clothing, does not sting nor burn like harsher antiseptics, has a fresh, clean odor. Get a 30 or 70 cent bottle from your druggist today. There is nothing exactly like Bactine. <music> Chapter 9, Book 78. It is evening now in Seacliff, San Francisco, and Jack Barber, ducking across the hedge to the family home from his house next door, finds his brother Clifford alone in the shadowed library, looking glumly down toward the garden where Henry Barber and Elwood Giddings are carrying on an animated conversation. Jack says, Hi, Cliff. Where's Mom, you know? In the kitchen. Boy, if there's ever a house that's undersupplied, it's mine. Bet he's all ready to f- fry some filet of sole and we don't even have any flour. What are you looking at? Oh, Dad and Elwood, huh? Dad sure likes him. Likes him? He's got a crush on him. <laughs> hey, you, you sure everything's okay between Elwood and Teddy? Sure, as far as I know, why? Betty says Elwood suddenly decided to move back to the hotel. Oh, that's just being considerate. It's a little late for it, but considerate in his fashion. He decided this noon that his being here was too much work for Mom. Oh, what's the matter with you? Might be my sacroiliac. Huh? That's an occupational twist in the back. All bagging smashers get it. <laughs> what were you lifting? Oh, Elwood's trunk. Alone? Oh, sure. He was helping Dad and Gans unload some dainty little flower flats down the garden. I'm his valet. Why didn't you know? Oh, come on. Oh, that's a fact. House guests get service around here. I'm now the head porter. Is this a gag? A gag. Well, you should be around here. I've had Elwood getting thrown to me as a good example until his name hits my face with a smack of a wet towel. Yeah, Dad, you make it a little rough, I know. He's beating his old records this time. You should hear it. Elwood worked his way through dental school. Elwood's an early riser, early to bed, going to get somewhere, ambitious, self-made. Wow. Miss Nooney said to me, Elwood's moving back to the hotel. Take the car, run down with his luggage. Luggage, that trunk weighed 140 pounds. Why didn't you call somebody to help? No, I was sore. I took the trunk and his bags for him, and when he's ready to go, I'll chauffeur him. He's waiting until Teddy and Paul get home. She went down to the airport with Paul after lunch. Well, good evening, Jack. Hi, Mom. Is your back feeling any better, Clifford? Mm, Sure, it's all right, Mom. Jack, your brother was trying to show people how strong he was. Carried Elwood's trunk all alone. Can you imagine? How are you, Jack? Oh, fine. Lawyers don't have to do any heavy lifting. Well, Clifford didn't need to either. Mr. Gans or Elwood would have been glad to help him. Say, Mom, guess what we're out of this time? <laughs> I can't imagine. Well, Betty got all ready to fry some filet of sole. Oh, I'll get it. Hello? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, Jack, it's Betty. Uh-oh. Hi. Yeah, well, I'm just... Well, I only stopped to talk to Clifford. Okay, well, I'm coming, Betty. Huh? Yeah, I talked to Cliff about it. There isn't anything. Uh, too much work for Mom. I'll tell you when I get home. I'm coming right away, Betty. I will. She ran out of flour. I don't see how a housewife can run out of something like that that you need every ten minutes. Don't tell me you and Betty are having a fuss. No. <laughs> she just think I always stay too long over here. Well, I'll get you. No, no, I'll get it. She just needs two cups, and I know where it is. I'll see you later. Take it easy, Cliff. You okay, Jack? I'll go out the back way, Mom. All right, Jack. Oh, boy. If your back still hurts you tomorrow, you'd better see Dr. Thompson. Yeah, well. That was a juvenile performance, Clifford. You can't blame anybody but yourself. Yeah, I suppose it was, Mom. 
But that gets under my skin. You shouldn't let him. You ought to know by this time he doesn't mean these things. Oh, yeah, sure. He was sorry Elwood felt he had to go. He wanted us all to be friendly and helpful. Sure, sure. Anyway, you didn't have to take the trunk down that very minute. You could have waited until Elwood was ready to leave. I was following orders, Mom. I'm just a private around here. Clifford, if you take the trouble to get acquainted with Elwood... Mom, I've been polite to the guy. I said I would be, and I also said I didn't have to like him, and I don't. Thank you, Mr. Farmer. Now, be careful now. Elwood's coming. Come in, Elwood. Well, I hate to intrude, but... I think I'd better run along, Mrs. Barber. I won't wait for Teddy. I'll see you tomorrow night anyway. It's so near dinner time. Why don't you stay? And Clifford will drive you down afterwards. Sure. Oh, no, no. I, I'm i not going to impose myself for another dinner. I didn't realize it was getting so late. I, I was just trying to tell Mr. Barber how much I appreciate your... Well, it sure was nice of you to have me here. I only hope I didn't overstay my welcome. Why, we've enjoyed having you, Elwood, very much. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you again. I... <laughs> I guess this is about the fourth time, but I, I did enjoy staying here. Well, I must see how Mrs. Kettle was getting along with dinner. Clifford, you drive, Elwood. Okay, Mom. All right, Elwood, let's take off. We'll be seeing you off now, Elwood. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Barber. Good night. Uh, mind if I use the phone, Clifford? You go right ahead. Sorry, uh, you had to take my trunk. I didn't know you were doing it. or would have helped. That's okay. Think nothing of it. Hello? Uh, will you please send a cab right away to 264 Seacliff Drive? Yes, thank you. Hey, what's the big idea? I'll take you down. No, oh, I, I can't ask you to do that. Oh, I'm glad to. Well, thanks, Clifford, but uh, that'll make you late for dinner. Oh, what of it? Here, let's call no, him back. No, please don't. Please. But I thought you were going to wait and see Teddy before you go. He and Paul ought to be here pretty soon. Well, I was, but I didn't realize that it make all this confusion at dinner time. I'll see you tomorrow. we got a date for a movie. Oh, uh... She knows you're going to a hotel? Yes, I, I told her this noon. Now, let's see. Uh, the coat, hat. Yeah. Well, so, look, uh, you have something you want to do, Clifford. You go right ahead. I'll sit here till the cab comes. No, no, no. I was just waiting around to take you down the car. Say, um, there's something I wanted to mention to one of you. I'm trying to say it to your father, but, well. What's that, Owen? Oh, uh, about coming here as a house guest. That, uh... Well, that was a mistake. I realize that now. Hmm, I don't see how you figured Dad urged you to come. Well, yeah. There's a lot of difference between Homestead, Wisconsin, and San Francisco, California. I mean, well, I, I don't suppose you know much about the Kickapoo Valley. The what? That's my home, the Kickapoo Valley. It's isolated country back in the hills. A lot different than this, though. Everything's different. How do you mean? Well, we don't even have a hotel in Homestead. Only 700 population. If a stranger comes to town, he's all right. Somebody puts him up. Don't think anything about it. So, your father said, come and stay. That was fine. Cordial, he meant it. But I, I know now I shouldn't have accepted. I, I'm just a country boy, I guess. Well, what the heck? You were invited, Elwood. If I know Dad, you were practically Shanghai. I still shouldn't have come. We haven't been very good hosts, if you feel that way, fella. Oh, you've all been swell. Especially you, Clifford, taking my trunk and all. Well, I don't know what you're apologizing for. Oh, yes, you do. I was never in a house like this in my life. Not even when I was in the Army. When I left home for dental school, I'd never been out of the valley. Strictly hazy. I had to work my way, so I still had a lot of rough spots even after college. Then in the Army... Well, we were always shorthanded in the dental corps. I didn't get around much until the end when I met Teddy. So I I haven't learned any social graces, I guess. But I can't learn them. I'm going to. Well, would you don't have to apologize for anything. Oh, I'm not ashamed of my background. Don't get that idea. My people came to Wisconsin way back in 1830. They've always been self-reliant, paid their own way, worked hard, and I'm proud of them. Our fashions are different, that's all. Look, for instance, this is probably a dumb question, but when you've been a house guest, do you give a tip to the housekeeper, like to Mrs. Kettleman, for instance? In a movie once, I saw a fella tip a butler. So what about that? <laughs> well, I, I guess it's done in certain places, Elwood, but Mrs. Kettleman would be insulted. Okay. Only way I can find out these things is to ask. <laughs> Come on now, cancel that cab while driving No, down. no, no, thank you, though. But I've caused enough confusion hanging around all afternoon. I'll tell you what we'll do. Some morning, come on up and play around the golf with me. Well, uh, it's nice of you to ask me, Clifford. I've never even had a golf club in my hand. Well, you have to start sometime. I'd sure like to learn. 
I imagine golf be a big help in a dental business. You meet so many people. Yeah, all with teeth. <laughs> yeah. Besides, it's fun. Yeah. You know, that's another thing I've got to learn. How to have fun. I never learned how to play at anything. I'm too doggone busy. Oh, as you can. Well, uh, I'll see you all tomorrow, Clifford. Sure been nice. I I appreciate... Well, I, I mean, another time I... Teddy will be sorry she missed you, Elwood. Huh? I say Teddy will be sorry she missed you. I, I hope you're right. Well, good night. Good night, Elwood. Thanks for everything. See you tomorrow. <laughs> will be back in just a moment. You know, every day we're hearing words of praise from you folks who have discovered back team. Here's an example. Hey, honey, I'm home. Oh, yes, and you sold your sketches. I can tell by the tone of your voice. Yep. Mr. Clark liked every one of them. I'll tell you all about it if you'll be a good little wife and bring me the back team. I'm way ahead of you, mister. Here it is. Sit down right here and take off your shoes and socks. Oh, boy, yes. Say, you know what? Back team is doing the trick. It's wonderful for athletes for... Since I've been using it, the old dogs are feeling a lot better. So, you know, I'm sure glad we decided to try back team. It's great stuff. The handiest bottle in the house, a lot of folks are saying. And we think you'll find this to be true, friends. We want you to try back team and discover for yourself its many, many household uses. Get a 30 or 70 cent bottle from your drugstore on our double your money back guarantee. That's right. If back team doesn't prove to be the finest household antiseptic and all around germicide you've ever used, Miles Laboratories Incorporated will refund double your full purchase price. Be sure you ask for B-A-C-T-I-N-E. Back team. Here's the family again. Has Elwood gone, Clifford? Yeah, sure has. G-O-N-E, gone. Why do you say it like that? That's the way he made me feel. Gone. Period. Do you feel a cold coming on? Do you feel miserable with hay fever? Take Tabsin quick. Feel better quick. T-A-B-C-I-N, Tabsin, the improved antihistaminic tablet that is more than just an antihistamine alone. Tabsin is a combination of ingredients that can do more for you. Tabsin relieves the sneezes, sniffles, the watering and itching of the eyes and nose. And Tabsin also helps relieve the headache that so often accompanies hay fever and colds. Get Tabsin today. T-A-B-C-I-N, Tabsin, the bright red tablets in the bright red package at all drugstores. One Man's Family is brought to you every weekday night at this time, transcribed by Miles Laboratories, makers of Bactine. Tomorrow, Chapter 10, Book 78. This is a Carlton E. Morse production, directed by Michael Raffetto. Thank you.